your thoughts on UT's SEC Media Day representation. That is on our YouTube page. I want your votes. You've got four choices. You've got good. You got no Nico, not good. No Pierce, question mark. And then just try again. Chuck it and be done with it. If I give you those four and you have to choose between those, who do you choose? Brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. From a media perspective, I'm going to go try again. Because guess what, guys? And they can say whatever they want about we're about a team and our leadership. It's called SEC Media Days. It's for the media. It's for the biggest stories around each team. I have immense respect for Amari Thomas and Keenan Peely. And, and obviously, Cooper Mays would have gone anyway. They, if they're team captains this year, fine. SEC Media Days is not about who your team captains are. It's who your biggest storylines are. And so it should not have been those three. It should have been Nico Iamaleava, James Pierce, and yes, Cooper Mays, or no Brew McCoy, if you, if you wanted to throw in Brew McCoy too. Um, so no I would – yeah. So this is a big issue for me. And, Dave, I got to be honest. I think the, I think SEC Media Days should switch things up. You know what I think they should do? Yeah, yeah. but before you get to that, can, you didn't think they would do this, did you? I remember it was I, you, and John, I, you and John both no, thought no, no, it no, would no, be no, no, I, no, John thought it, no, I thought they would do this because I've seen how they do this. They always take their leaders and okay. their veterans. I thought they would do this. I'm not surprised. We don't wake up this morning surprised. We're we, we basically just a little bit disappointed. I, I, w- I want to play off your other point and then, and then get back to what you were saying. It's not just SEC media days. It should be SEC recruiting days too. So a really smart forward-thinking coach, not to say that Josh Heupel's not, but would push for a Nico to get out there. Now, the University of Tennessee reached out to me and said in 17 years, there's never been a freshman or a redshirt freshman attend the meetings, and there never will be. I said, well, how mummy took Jared Lorenzen in 2000? He was the true freshman. We didn't know who the hell he was. We thought he was an offensive lineman and started to interview him as such. Um, so it can be done. There's no rule against it. But I think that Tennessee missed a grand opportunity to have possibly the number one pick in the NFL draft and one of the most exciting young players who is, I know, a redshirt freshman, but would have done a fantastic job with the media. I actually would have more concern about taking James Pierce because of what I've heard about his penchant to run in his mouth a little bit than I would about taking Nico. I would have no problem with Nico's maturity and taking him. I think he's a little shy, not crazy about it, but as far as what he would say, he would represent the University of Tennessee in the best possible way. Well, and to bolster your point, there's a legitimate argument that Tennessee is going to have the number one draft pick in the next two years in the NFL. You could have both of them at SEC Media Days this year, which is a huge tool. I got a fix for this. It's a media event. I think the media should vote on the three players the school's going to send. And they get to pick the three players each school sends. Well, you know, that's never going to happen. I know, because but that's... I, I, I don't disagree with you, but here's the problem. Okay? If if Nico, Pierce, and Cooper win it this year, which they probably would. I don't know. Some people might go popularity vote because he's a skilled position player like Brew, but whatever. That they're they're going to send those guys theoretically under your premise. However, I don't know that Josh Heupel wants to do that. I almost wonder if SEC Media Days, and I can't believe I'm saying this, has jumped the shark. I almost wonder if they're better off having regional media days. Say at some point they do break up into a pod system, which I believe, and I think you believe they will. How about just an East media days or West media days? Because I know of a lot of people that cover Tennessee football. One that I have a lot of respect for told me I can spend the same amount of money covering Tennessee baseball for 12 days in Omaha, as opposed to going to hear Josh Heupel say nothing, which is by design and he takes pride in it in Dallas, Texas. And as a businessman, those thoughts are going through my head today too, Caleb, to be real honest with you, after I saw those three. Because we talked to Cooper, 
Keenan's going to be made available. Um, we've talked to Amari. I mean, what for for a Tennessee media perspective or a fan perspective? What does this do for the unofficial kickoff of football season? I think it takes about a two or three pounds of pressure out of the ball when you're kicking it off. Yeah, and Josh Heupel picked – he picked the three most mature guys who will never run their mouths. Okay, last year when we were there, we got lucky because Joe Milton ran his mouth a little bit last year. Remember? The whole I don't lose in Florida thing. Um, I did. He did, and that was good. I was like, oh, that's the best we're ever going to get from a Josh Heupel team, but I'll take it. Yes, exactly. Best I got out of Amare, we've, we we joked last year that uh, West Tennessee has the best football talent because we're both from Memphis. But um, So we had a little fun with that. Uh, Rowan Foster agreed. He's from, I think, Covington. Um, so anyways, uh, the reason I wanted to – the interesting thing about it – yeah, you're right. I'm not blaming Josh Heupel for sending who he sent. He, I am. I, I'm not, and I'll tell you why. It's not – Josh Heupel is thinking about – Josh Heupel thinks this, this event as a leadership event. It's basically effectively your captains, who you want your team to rally around in the season. He's doing his job. I think it's up to the SEC, and it's up to Greg Sankey, by the way, if you want – the whole idea of the media days is to is for the sake of the conference to generate the storylines. Isn't that the point? I don't know anymore. Now I'm glad you asked the, the exact way you ask it because Travis says unpopular opinion. SEC media days is unnecessary. So uh, let's let's have that. What is it supposed to be for? Brought to you by Rick Terry Jewelry Design. They want to be your jeweler. Looking for affordable game day jewelry? How about the Fire Opals, the Tennessee tradition? RickTerryJewelry.com. RickTerryJewelry.com, and you can see a sample of the Fire Opals and the Tennessee pendant. Right above my shoulder. Also, they have those power T cufflinks, which are awesome. So, what is the point? Is it, I is, think, is it to give media something to write about? Is it to just stir the pot, get people excited before football season? Is it to give players an opportunity to speak in front of the media so they're prepared for the NFL? Is it a is it an opportunity for a coach to push his narrative? Which you know Josh Heupel loves the narrative of taking an offensive lineman, a defensive lineman, and another defensive player. Because what have the what's everybody said about him? He's an offensive coach that puts together a poor defense and uh, has issues at times on the offensive line. That's what people have said. Now he gets to throw that point. in their face. I can tell you the point, and it's not the point is not what it used to be. Because if this if this was a if this was about generating storylines, they would have it in the same hotel every year where they would make it the most conducive for the people there on a business trip to do interviews. Dave, last year was my first SEC media days. I'm just going to say this. Well, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but I'm just going to say this. They are now making it just an excuse for a tourist attraction for the reporters who cover SEC football teams every year. Or a convention. Like, They're made, yeah, like, it's a convention. Like, it's not supposed like to be HVAC a convention. Companies, you know, like HVAC companies, we we love working with city heating and air conditioning. Now, I don't know that they do this, but oftentimes they, they why manufacturers pay for their employees to go on conferences. But those are as and much about networking and learning about as as anything else. The fact that this is in Dallas, you talk about bolstering your point and not Austin. I mean, that. It's in Dallas. Why in the hell is it in Dallas? I mean, Dallas is not a, an SEC town. I mean, you your your point is so incredibly bolstered by that one fact that you don't even need anything else. It's in Dallas. It's bizarre. Yes, it, Nashville was a reach, even though you had Vanderbilt. Yeah, and it's funny, and you can tell. And uh, guys, I'm, 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 Dave is. I want you guys to know this up front. Dave is forcing me into my Greg Sinky criticism early in this on this Tuesday morning. I I, I was actually going to not go at Greg Sinky today, but this is what Greg Sinky has done with the SEC in a certain way. He's tried to make it a national circus in a lot of ways, and this is another example of that. I was at SEC Media Days last year in Nashville. Dave, I cannot tell you how mind blown I was with the poor planning on logistics. They, they focus so much on showing reporters Nashville, which, by the way, everybody who's ever worked covering the SEC has been to Nashville already, right? Like, it's not like yeah. it's not some novel thing. And they still tried right. to make it a tourist event. And 
yet, for those who don't know when we were there, you couldn't even get dropped off at the hotel when you were going there because there was so much construction going on. You had to get dropped off at a parking lot a mile away and then take a shuttle bus to get to SEC Media Days at the hotel. It was well, absolutely ridiculous. And along those lines, if you know, and I, I don't like Birmingham, I don't like Hoover, but when you have it there, at least you know where everything is, right? You know how to get You're from there to do a to job. Place. Right. You're there to do a job. You're not. You know, they didn't tell you to lay train tracks and put you out in the middle of the desert or something. So you're there. Um, you're there to do a job. And Nashville was there for a media event. You're exactly right. And that to me is unfortunate. And I'll be honest with you because we love you guys and we shared a lot of the things that we do at Off the Hook Sports. And we've got some big announcements coming up here shortly. I was prepared for this. In that we're, we're planning on covering SEC Media Days in Dallas because we love getting the interviews with the other media types and some of the players and coaches. We, I mean, we love that. But I'm not expect if I do it, I'm not expecting to get anything out of Tennessee, and that's somewhat disappointing, isn't it? Very disappointing. But this is why I said. And I say that with no knock to Cooper. I want everybody to know that because we get all that we can talk to about Cooper every week. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm going to add this, though. What we're talking about, what Greg Sinke is using the SEC for, that's all the more reason to let the media members vote on who's going. Okay? And the school has to give a very specific reason if a player that they vote to go can't go. Okay? Okay, but let I me just throw this at you. If they vote for James Pierce... And he Nets charges have been dismissed, but he had that traffic accident where he supposedly was not respectful of police officers. Are you telling me that you're if you're Josh Heupel, you're okay with not vetoing that? If the fans say, I want James Pierce, you want to be able to veto that. Come on. Media members, not fans, media members. Josh Heupel, I don't care if he wants to veto it. I don't think the coaches should get a say. I think this is solely the players, the I mean the media. It is SEC media days. The okay, you know that vote. you know I agree with you, but it's not it's not gonna change with Josh Heupel. It that some guys may be amendable to it. Like you could probably call Lane Kiffin and say, we want a lot more media access, and he'd be like, Okay, it's more time I get to spend with my 25-year-old girlfriend. But at Tennessee, it's not changed with Josh Heupel. He loves well, to control narr- he loves to control narratives, which Oh, he, I, think he he's kind of a smart thing. I don't blame Josh Hyde before that, but you're right. If you're a media guy, this is why you love Elaine Kiffin. And this is probably why he keeps getting jobs, honestly, when he's gotten in trouble, because a lot of people, I think, prop Lane Kiffin up a little more than they should. But let's be honest, Dave, the reason is we're all in the media a little more fair to Lane Kiffin because he makes our job a lot easier. He gives us content every single day to talk about. You want that, right? With, with what we do, we want a coach who gives us content. It depends and, what you do in the media. If you're the guy that has to keep track of what he has to do every day, I wouldn't enjoy that. But for what we do, yeah, we'll take that. We for love what we, Yeah. For what we do, we need you to stop, take one second, and click that like button, click that subscribe button. We want to hear that, and we want to make sure that you're a part of the channel. And also, just go ahead and fill in. You don't have to give me three. That's how many Tennessee will take to SEC media days, but give me who you would really like to take. And you can't pick Nico. I guess you could pick James Pierce if you want to include him in there. So let me just ask you, I'm not going to ask you for three because we did that last week, but if there was one mandatory where Caleb gets to throw down the Rook card, if you ever played Rook back in the day, and he gets to have that player, who is that player for you? And you can't say Nico. I mean, it would be James Pierce, obviously. Number one draft pick probably for next year, according to a lot of sources, runs his mouth, which you love at media days. Okay. You want that. And then also he, um, yeah, you could ask him about his dust up with the law, but his dust up with the law wouldn't be my top, wouldn't be my top reason. My top reason is number one draft pick and the guy talks. I want a guy who talks. I want a guy who talks a lot. And that's a good attitude. When I say good attitude, I don't care if they have a good attitude. When I say good attitude about defensive players, I'm saying they're a little bit mean. 
That's okay. a good attitude. Right. Like when I say Caleb Calhoun has a good attitude, well, he shows up to work every day. He loves his job. He's a great person. He's a great dad. He's a great husband. He has a great attitude. A great attitude for a defensive player is I'm a little ticked off at the world. Yeah, that, that's fine with me. That's what I want. That's I, want, what I want James Pierce. I want James Pierce to get up there and be like, Jalen Milrow will, will will be carried off the field in a stretcher this year. Just something crazy like that. Dylan says Gaston Moore, Cooper Mays, Amari Thomas. Gaston uh, Moore. I'm not. I'm not. Not completely opposed uh, to to Gaston Moore. 